One of the more contentious design choices that comes with games trying to emulate films is the cinematic set piece. These brief bursts of mayhem are tightly constructed and meant as frantic moments of excitement, but their often scripted nature can ironically make them less mechanically hectic than the more common gameplay scenarios. Cinematic set pieces, or scripted sequences, whatever you want to call them, fill the same sort of narrative hole as a tough boss fight. They're a climactic test of the character's core skills and exist as an obstacle for them to overcome against all odds. But if games are going to try and tap into that central tension of a gruelling battle, or even emulate the excitement of seeing something like this in the cinema, there are a couple of issues that need addressing. These obtrusive bits of set dressing can feel extremely patronising to anyone who's grown to recognise them. Used incredibly sparingly, they can provide some shock and brief artificial tension, but frequent use gives the game away too easily. These bits of fluff aren't anything substantial, they're momentary pauses rather than additional challenge, and can actually take you out of the moment with how transparent they are. The 2013 Tomb Raider reboot suffers from this stuff all over the place. One in this ship set piece actually removes tension. It looks it's like you're going to have to climb the ship while getting shot at by enemies, Uncharted 3 style, but then the game does away with this mildly interesting gameplay scenario by having this guy die as quickly as he shows up. There's one near the end of the title that's just absurd. There's so much bombastic music and intense conditions around you, but all you're really doing is climbing up a straight surface. Let's take a quick look at what exactly players will press here. First you need to hold up, then move to the right, press the jump button and X to latch onto the rocky surface, rinse, repeat, move left, you're sorted. What's kind of hilarious is this end game set piece has one near mechanically identical to it at the start of Rise of the Tomb Raider, just without all the pretensions of excitement. Nothing that goes on around this wall matters. When Jonas says, Keep your eyes open for falling ice. he's talking strictly to Lara, not the player, because it's thrown in there for artificial tension, to make players feel like they've accomplished something tricky when it's amazingly simple. New mechanics aren't needed to make this work. Jumping, maneuvering, and using the climbing pick are already in the game. They just aren't contextualized in any real threat. Just as an idea, the pick has a decent amount of landing lag that makes it impossible to chain together jumps on this surface too quickly. If the falling ice and rocks were real obstacles, there'd automatically be some decision making in whether the slow climbing animation is quick enough to set you out of their path or whether you should jump and risk getting hit by rocks falling elsewhere. It's not much, but that's possible with pre-existing mechanics and it's not even that radical an application. Instead, it's all smoke and mirrors. Despite the prevalence of this mobility throughout the whole game, this climactic moment is a walk in the park. Functionally, what should be two situations drastically separated by difficulty are not just identical to each other, but all walls across both titles. That set dressing only becomes a real obstacle at the end of Rise. I couldn't believe my eyes. I had to stop and test it out just to make sure I wasn't seeing things. Adding a bit of spice to the scene is fine. Good even. But when you're so transparent about the danger something poses in an interactive event, it comes off as condescending. Uncharted 4 has some similar missed potential. All the Uncharted titles do this fake out fool antics, but this time there's a rope mechanic. How about jumping to a ledge only for it to break and then you have to react and smash that L button in time to not die? Kinda like this snippet of Panic in the New Tomb Raider, only the rope better keeps the pace of an intense set piece going. More intrusively, when Sam says to follow him to a ledge, trying to actually pull it off gets you killed. Instead, the game wants you to get hit by an explosion and fall a greater distance in order to survive. Obviously. The problem is that here the fake tension dictates the real tension. The game breaks its own rules. All the fluff acts as a constraint on player expression and creativity. Don't let the set dressing dictate the set piece. No one likes Caesar without a salad and no one likes ketchup without chips. Serve some substance with your flavouring. Linearity is fine. These sequences are clearly going for a quick rush of adrenaline. But when the stakes are fakes, there's no thrill on the grill. If this is going to be remedied, these sequences should really be execution based. Checking players on on stringing together the skills they've acquired in rapid succession and narrowly avoiding death. But as tests of player reasoning and reflexes, ideally they'd revolve around the core mechanics. Half-Life 2 is often thought of as a precursor to the set pieces of today, but there's a reason it's earned its reputation as a somewhat gimmicky sequel. Outmaneuvering a helicopter dropping bombs while you run a speedboat through a poisonous canal sounds pretty cool, but in order for it to work organically, a whole chapter is dedicated to learning how the speedboat works and very gradually ramping things 
things up. It does at least test the player on acquired skills. It's not a load of fluff and no substance. You have to avoid and shoot without the game holding your hand. You can even be clever and take out supports under enemies, but it feels a bit detached from the rest of the game. Like much of Half-Life 2, it exists to be technically impressive, and it is for 2004, but technical prowess doesn't stand the test of time like consistent gameplay does. The Uncharted and rebooted Tomb Raider series at least have their set pieces more in line with their core mechanics of running, jumping and shooting, even if their simplicity means these are rarely genuine tests. Set dressing can even have a purpose here, you can use it to disguise challenges until they're right on top of you. Platforms can crumble away right in front of you for a sudden jump, or enemies can show up seemingly out of nowhere. Tomb Raider 2013 could have done this, but for no reason slows down right when you have to do anything requiring effort, pulling the plug on all of the challenge. I was glad that Uncharted 4 didn't pull this nonsense, but then it turns out you don't even need to get rid of these obstacles, so what's the point? But to be fair, Rise of the Planet of the Tomb Raiders did subvert my expectations in a pretty neat way. That earlier moment of panic over a static bridge is actually a setup for a little later, when a suspiciously similar looking platform really does collapse. It not only tests perception, but also reflexes in terms of jumping at the right time and not slacking off, forgetting to jam in the climbing pick when you think the coast might be clear. Although this basically is a QTE, so I'm not sure it counts. It's a shame this is an isolated situation. By and large, most of the set pieces don't offer that much in the way of quick thinking, when they really should be more exciting. In one thrilling chase, despite all the commotion, I quite literally forgot there was a sprint button because I was in no real hurry. You'll only die via one of these couple hundred of arrows in a cutscene if you fall asleep at the controls. So you've got cases where the core mechanics aren't really being reviewed, and cases where what is reviewed feels a bit contrived. Half-Life 2 Episode 2's finale may feature a vehicle as well, but given how much you use the car throughout the game, a climax focused on driving around shooting some of the tougher enemies feels more like a natural culmination than just a cool concept someone thought of in development. It's when you have something utterly divorced from the core concepts of a title that things get ugly. Splinter Cell Blacklist and Hitman Absolution already had controversial changes to their usual stealth formulae, but the set pieces here are so widely hated because they completely clash with the driving force of tension in these games. Set pieces in stealth games are such a contentious issue because they don't act as a skill barrier on a player's ability to hide. Loud, boisterous explosions don't gel with the quiet, methodical experiences these series offer. If you really gotta have your scripted moment fix, make it still about gauging the stealth capabilities of the player, whether one can manage to stay hidden despite a sudden change in the environment, or perhaps go back to being hidden once more after getting found. Splinter Cell is certainly no stranger to scripted moments, but they usually at least fit with the sneaky espionage vibe. Splinter Cell 1 had some dumb scripted moments I guess, but Chaos Theory kept that stuff minimal and it's the best. A large part of it is the whole light and dark dichotomy, so one of the scripted moments has a whole room like up beneath your feet. It taps into the same nail-biting tension the player has come to fear across the title, which is why it's so effective. Its one forced action bit is widely considered the worst part of the game, and you can only really ghost around it with an exploit. For the most part though, there's some restraint. They don't completely upend the level design or force the player into certain actions in order to have something really epic to put in the trailers. Think about what kind of possibilities such a sequence provides for the core gameplay and expand from there. It's one of the reasons the train from Uncharted 2 is brought up as the peak of the PS3 trilogy. It doesn't just provide a great setting for a shootout, nor is it just impressive on a technical level. There are elements here that are only possible because of the location. Climbing between inside and outside layers to avoid fire and dodging fast obstacles are mechanics contextualized by the set piece. There are moments later where you have to keep your eyes on enemies as you duck these signs flying at you. There's a juggling of mechanics that doesn't really happen in other moments where you're just asked to hold a direction while something really really cool happens behind you. Contrasting this is the train from Blacklist, which is a linear corridor in the most literal sense of the word. The design all but railroads you into shooting your way through here, making a stealth approach feel incredibly limited and contrived. To get through this first door unspotted, you have to throw down a smoke grenade before going through, and then you're just stuck behind one piece of cover, throwing whatever gadgets you can to get rid of enemies. The scenario doesn't provide players any real alternate approaches if you try and play in the splinter cell spirit. Set piece pieces are really just a short-lived piece of level design with a fancy setting if you think about it, so treat them as such. Let them inspire level design rather than limit it. The Tomb Raider Rises has a pretty good example near the finish line. Preceding a shock setback once you reach the gate, there's a decently open level to explore, with incentive to do so as there's an 
option to take out bells across the map. With this trebuchet making an appearance, your knowledge of the environment is recontextualized into a set piece, requiring you to make your way back but with flaming rocks and a horde of enemies after you. For once I actually think they didn't go far enough with the set piece. More of these projectiles would make for an even more frantic chase as you race across tight ropes and weave through enemies. In fact, upon replaying it, I'm not sure the trebuchet can even hit you, it's just these blue arrows. But in concept, I do like this approach. It doesn't just give options, but allows players to become very familiar with those options beforehand in a different scenario, helping the ensuing scramble feel more natural. Uncharted 4's Madagascar Chase arguably pulls off an organic combination of over-the-top action and player expression better than anything else in the series. It combines all the common mechanics, shooting, jumping, driving, rope climbing, but they're enhanced by the setting. The sequence is still largely scripted. At the convoy, jeeps only approach if you've met certain requirements in the number of enemies shot, trucks always explode for some reason when jumping to another vehicle, and the chase always ends at this point. But overall, it still largely expands on the gameplay as well as placing it in an exciting setting. The scripting is hidden well enough by giving players an incentive to move forward with the very real shots coming at you, as well as offering minor choices in approach or how you take out enemies. Is your car too beaten up to reach that truck for a jump? Will you have to use the rope instead and so have to nail shooting enemies moving at high speeds? It may follow the same A to B structure each time, but your control still feels natural enough and the danger still feels real enough that it's one of the few cinematic set pieces that ends up as a great success. Because the problem isn't necessarily linearity. These are designed to be rip-roaring blockbuster moments. Carefully constructed pacing is key to their being. The issue comes with games not using them as opportunities to expand on level design or mechanics, but instead making players feel like action heroes while doing as little as possible. With any experience in games, the illusion is lost, especially after they've been seen so many times. I'm not a big fan of these, but I don't think they're entirely beyond salvaging. It's just that the approach feels wrong. Think about what your gameplay premise is and ramp that up. Build some excitement around the mechanics on display. Make these moments exciting by having exciting gameplay.